you know what? I think it's actually just as well I took the break from YouTube when I did and that it was a long break because I think otherwise this video would be pretty much a carbon copy of absolutely every video I would have made in re relation to Chelsea match reviews because that was just the same old sh that I've seen from us every single week to be honest since uh, Graham Potters took over and even uh, in, the la in the back end of Tuchel as well it was just an absolutely nothing performance from Chelsea overall and uh, yeah we got ourselves a one-all draw against Nottingham Forest at the City ground and in the end I said to my brother when it was full time I'll actually take the draw because I think we didn't deserve anything from the game I think Forest were much the better team definitely showed more glimpses of actually winning the game and uh, yeah we didn't deserve anything from that game so overall we'll actually take a point which sounds ridiculous to say but um, that's the way it is but yeah like like I said, just an absolutely nothing display once again from Chelsea, and uh, until we get a proper midfield, it's it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same every single week. I mean, Jorginho and Zakaria, I'm not fully pinning it on them today. I'm not going to scapegoat anyone because everyone, I think, was terrible, bar maybe Thiago Silva, and obviously Kepa, who had a decent game as well, you know, did what he had to do, really. But, uh, yeah, I just think until we get a proper midfielder, you know, a proper holding midfielder, and someone next to him, like an Enzo Fernandez, who it looks like we're going to be signing, or even if you stick Kovacic in there as well, I don't think it's going to change, to be honest because you even see that with clear evidence of how many times we got bypassed in midfield and how many times Forrest broke so quickly through the midfield and it just doesn't happen to other teams like City and your you know United and your Arsenal and your Liverpool it just doesn't happen to them but you know why they have proper midfields and uh, we just don't we have one of the most imbalanced midfields in the Premier League especially at the top level and uh, yet yeah, nothing's going to change until we sort out our midfield issue and even if you look at our goal it came from absolutely nothing really and it was kind of a poxy goal to be honest I mean it was a good finish from Sterling it was a good finish from him because I will say it did bounce, it did bobble in front of him and it came at him quickly. So it was a good finish from him from a few yards out and he did well to get into the position like he did for Man City and, you know, typical Raheem Sterling getting into the right position for goals, which is a good thing. But Willy Bolly nearly scoring, it was almost, if you remember Tony Popovich's goal in 2004, I think it was, for Crystal Palace, just nearly an identical own goal from Willy Bolly. Obviously rebounds off the crossbar and Sterling gets the goal, but came from absolutely nothing. I think then we were okay for like 10, 15, 20 minutes maybe in the first half and I actually was positive going into the second half because I thought we had the game kind of controlled Forrest didn't really create that many chances in the first half and even before going into the game I was like thinking really negatively you know because it was the type of game that Chelsea would lose away from home against newly promoted side you know New Year's Day a uh, good atmosphere at the city ground and uh, yet not in Forrest especially who are you know driven for points at this moment in time given the position they're in I thought that it would have been a tough game for us so that's why I actually say I'll take a point in the end but it's just it's just deflating from the performance point of view to be honest and yeah obviously they got their goal and uh, to be honest I, I saw it coming literally I'm not even messing about 30 seconds before the goal actually happened I said we're conceding and to be honest I'm not going to take any credit for it because it's like predicting f***ing Haaland's going to score next week if you know what I mean and yeah they were getting back into the game they create a few chances I mean Gibbs White hit the, the bar with an absolute thunder kind of a shot and uh, there was one as well where Johnson should have probably squared it across to Awani for an easy tapping as well just before that and yeah just a scrappy goal I can't really blame any, any player individually because it's just one of those goals and yeah you could see it coming and to be honest, I think we're absolutely blessed that we didn't concede a winning goal after that because I think Forrest, kind of as the game grew on after that goal, kind of sat on their laurels and kind of settled for a point like we did as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the only reason why we didn't concede, really. But it just doesn't excuse anything because we could say it's a one-off result, but it's really not. We've seen countless, countless evidence now to say that it's not going to be a one-off result. And we play Man City now on Thursday, which is going to be just fucking fun. Oh. And do you know what the best thing is? We play a Man City team who are wound up after drawing at Everton yesterday, which makes it even more fucking enjoyable because they're definitely going to go to absolute town on us, which is, yeah, it's going to be fun. And I'm going to that game as well, so hopefully uh, no one dies of that game in anger. Positives. Let's look at any sort of positives whatsoever. There's not a lot of positives, to be fair, other than maybe the fact that Thiago Silva I thought was good. I think Kepa was okay. I think Cucurella was okay. I've seen a lot of Chelsea fans giving stick to Koulibaly. I think Koulibaly was very poor, but I don't think he should be scapegoated by any sort of, any stretch of imagination, you know? I think he, was, he had a poor game, like everyone else did, or most other players. Uh, other positives, I thought Ziyech was decent off the bench. I thought he looked like our brightest spark off the bench. Aubameyang was the most pointless substitute of all time. It always is now when he comes on. He looks borderline suicidal playing for us, to be honest. Like, he just he just does not want to be there, does he? Conor Gallagher coming off the bench, and if there's one thing I decided on today, it's that he's not good enough. I hate to say it, but Conor Gallagher is not going to be good enough to play for us at the long term, at the elite level. He's just, his technical ability is not that good. You know, he's got a good engine on him. He's a good goal scorer. He's got a good shot on him. But his technical
technical ability to be in, in a midfield of you know where we want to go in the future as an elite club he's not good enough in my personal opinion and I think that if we can get 20, 30, 40 million for him I definitely think we should cash in and put that money towards someone like Enzo Fernandez, who is very good technically once again just another flat performance from our front front four and um, yeah obviously they didn't carry on the momentum from Bournemouth which is unfortunate I thought Pulisic was alright in terms of the fact that he just gets kicked the shit out of every two or three seconds there's not really much he can do Sterling again just disappointed me I know he got the goal but just just we need that little bit more from Sterling there's just that little bit more in him that we're not getting for some reason and it's so so frustrating because you can tell he's a world class player but he's just he's just not doing the business at this moment in time Havertz I thought was okay for spells of the game but kind of disappeared as the game went on in the second half especially Mason Mount once again the same I thought was okay but just another flat performance from him once again the midfield of Zakaria who was actually playing more advanced today which was pretty weird in front of Jorginho the two of them complemented each other really well against Bournemouth but just none of that was there today as I said we got bypassed the midfield so much and our midfield probably cost us the game to be honest as my opinions as for my opinions on Graham Potter I'm still backing him even though I feel like it's just one of those things that I just I just have that really bad gut feeling that it's not going to work out through no fault of his own really I just think that it's come at a wrong time and to be honest I think he must be the only manager in the history of fucking football to miss out on a new manager bounce I mean did he have a new manager bounce at all can anyone please you know disagree with me in the comment section below and you know tell me on that one because I'm fairly sure he has not had a new manager bounce which is just absolutely ridiculous really I think it does have something to do with the circumstances and fairness of Tuchel getting sacked and maybe the players were a little bit flat after Tuchel getting sacked or surprised or whatever and the fans definitely were that but yeah even still just as I said another frustrating result which as I said is uh, now a common occurrence at Chelsea and um, yeah we move on to Man City where hopefully we don't get smacked up and then even if we do we have them in the FA Cup next weekend as well so a fun time a very very fun time we have Baddy Sheila in the door now at least so hopefully he can just be a half decent player at least but yeah that's all I have to say on this video uh, Chelsea fans leave your comments down, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below on how you think this game went if you're back in Graham Potter or not if we'll get top four or not the obvious the obvious answer is no really but you know just beg the question and yeah I'll see you guys in my next video please leave a like if you did enjoy the video be massively massively appreciated and also if you could subscribe to the channel as well that would also be greatly appreciated to cure my depressive thoughts that I am currently experiencing and um, yeah happy new year and I will uh, see you in my next video